Hello everybody, we're back again with another attempted fix. So what we have here is a Ubiquiti Unify US 16, well 16 port, 150 watt switch. So we got a call on Friday to say that there was issues on network on a customer's site. When we called down, there was no lights on this device at all. Now, previous two days previous to this, um, it took them a couple of days to log the call, but previous to this, it, uh, there had been some sort of power outage and this just never came back up. So we got the customer to plug it out, leave it for a couple of minutes, plug it back in again, but nothing. We've already been down and swapped it out for a new switch, so I have this one that I can have a look at it and see if I can get it back up and running again. So I'm going to take the cover off it and just get a look at the boards. So with the cover off, this is what we see. So this is actually quite similar to the other switch and the way most switches are put together really. So I'm going to introduce my red probe and just use it as a pointer here. So we have two boards. We have this one, which is our power board. And we have this one that carries out pretty much the, you know, the, the guts, uh, the nuts and bolts of the switching circuit is here. This is really just a generic power supply. It takes an AC input, gives a DC output. It could be used for anything really, but this is the specific a uh, switching board that is you know unique to ubiquity and has you know unique functionality so uh just a quick overview we've got our ac coming in here so this is uh we're in europe so it'll be 230 volts ac comes into three wires here that's our live earth and neutral to these pins on the board here it goes through some emi filtering to a bridge rectifier circuit which converts it to dc so you should have about 320 volts dc on this that is then chopped and sent to a transformer where it's stepped down to what I think is 53 volts DC coming out of here. Um, and the 53 volts should come across these wires and power this board here. And that's the way it's meant to work. So the first thing we need to test here is to sort of break the circuit, break it, break the board in half and say, look, is the issue with this power supply or is the issue with this board? And the easiest way of doing this is just to check what the output voltage from the power supply is here. It's not 100%. You know, you can have quirky situations with this, but generally you will get the answer by doing this. We should be seeing 53 volts here. If we don't see 53 volts here, then there is likely an issue with this power board. And um, if we do have 53 volts here, then it's likely an issue with this board here. So let's check for voltage uh, across these pins here. To test the output from the power supply, what I did was I switched my multimeter to volts DC. I got my red probe and I pressed my red probe down into this connection in here to make contact with the little steel contact that's in these connectors. I took my black probe and I put it into the black connector here. And with this powered on, it was going from 40 up to 41 volts to 42 back down to 40 to 41 to 42 and just randomly going up and down there so I, I knew that there was a fault somehow at this point to just isolate the issue i plugged that four pin connector out of the board and tested it without the second board connected and it was doing the same thing so it seemed to me at that point that the issue was with this power board right here. So as you can see, what I had to do to investigate this, because there was a, there's a heat shield over the top, or a, sorry, a heat sink over the top. Um, I'm getting NASA talk here in my head. Um, this was very awkward to get out. So what I ended up doing was I cut through the center part of it to so that I could split it in two and easily take it out and easily access the components here. I'm sure that would be frowned on by some people, but I'm still maintaining the, you know, the heatsink function on both sides. That the bridge rectifier, the the main MOSFET, and I think there's a couple of other MOSFETs as well. They still have a heat sink, and we're just missing the top part here. So once again. The, the voltage output from this board is cycling between 40, 41, 42, and going round again. So I'm going to approach this uh, as it being a power fault and take it from there. I need to put in a, a disclaimer at this point. This board 
has an input that's mains voltage so you're dealing with 230 volts ac and 320 volts dc after it's rectified i'm going to show the steps that i took but i am not suggesting in any way that you should take these steps unless you have uh, the correct qualifications or the right expertise in order that you can do this safely Take the disclaimer out of the way i'm going to bring you through the steps that i used to troubleshoot this board so a lot of these linear switch mode power supplies are the same so what i can identify is that this section here is the emi filtering so you have an input section here where our 230 volts ac comes in i can see our four pins here which is our bridge rectifier and these bridge rectifier packages normally work that the two inner pins are the nc the nc the ac input and then the two outer pins are the dc output so that brings it on to the next section and in that section there's normally one main filter capacitor now i can easily identify the main filter capacitor because of the two large pins and the two large pads so this is sort of a good center point to measure and on this circuit i started by troubleshooting here so i switch my voltmeter to high voltage dc and i place my probe onto this pin here and i got my black probe and place it to the ground pin of that main filter capacitor when i measured that i was getting 310 but it was fluctuating up and down and up and down from 308 to 311 up and down and up and down now the purpose of the main filter capacitor is to keep a very stable dc voltage that is then usable for the rest of the circuit so i knew there was an issue at that point because the voltage was not stable now that can be for a number of reasons but it's generally suggested that when you have a fluctuation on the main filter capacitor to swap out the main filter capacitor i also chose to swap out the startup cap as well which on this circuit is this component here i know it's difficult to see it because you can't see both sides of the boards because they're true hole components i'm only seeing where the component is soldered to the board there's obviously the bulk of the capacitor is on the other side of the board but this is where the startup cap is this is where the main filter cap is i'm going to show a picture of the two of those they are the two components that i swapped out and as it turns out that's what got this back working again on screen i have both of the components that i replaced on the left i have a 450 volt 150 microfarad stg con capacitor this is the main filter capacitor on the right i have the startup capacitor which is a 50 volt 47 microfarad rubicon capacitor uh the one that i removed the main filter capacitor on the left that i removed i tested it and it was giving me no reading so i suspected that there was an issue with this the startup cap on the right i replaced just as a matter of you know playing the odds that this may be another component that might cause issues also so i replaced both of these components with new equivalents and when i did that the switch came back to life again so i suspect it's more to do with the main filter capacitor which is the component on the left but that's what got it working again for me now after i got it back working i checked online and apparently this is a known issue with these switches that the filter capacitor on the left is not of the greatest quality and that it can fail i've seen another video with another youtuber who had a similar situation with his switch and it was visible when he opened the cover off the switch he could see physical damage to the main filter capacitor and then could immediately identify that as being the problem and replace just that and that's what got his working again so i suspect it's probably the same in this case that i've changed the startup cap for no reason but again i was just playing the odds on this but if you have a switch ubiquity us 16 150w 
and you have the same fault that I have which is that the voltage coming from the power supply board is fluctuating from 40, 41, 42 going up and down, up and down. This may well be the issue. So I'm going to leave the video at that. If you have any comments, negative or positive, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave them below. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.